So I wanted to do a side by side comparison between both of these TVs. Now on the left I have the Sony X900H and on my right I have the new Samsung QN85A. Now both TVs are 4K with HDR support, both are 55 inch, both have HDMI 2.1 features, but the major difference is that the Samsung is using mini LED technology which enhances brightness, contrast and black levels. So in this video I'm going to talk about the pros, the cons based on my experience while putting them together. So welcome to the channel guys, I'm Jolster and let's do this! This video is sponsored by the coldest water bottle. Yes, summer is coming and I am assuming that you want to keep your drinks cold, right? Well, the coldest water bottle can hold that chill water for up to 36 hours. It has no sweat technology, very strong build, very lightweight. There are many sizes to choose from. So I got the cellular blue one. This is a 21 ounce bottle. It fits perfectly in my car cup holder and also on my e-bike. Check out the link in the description. Now one disclaimer I want to mention, since I'm recording this with a camera and the Samsung TV is so much brighter, you will see brightness clipping and loss of details in certain scenes on the QN85A. You will not see that in person. Alright, so at first glance I can clearly see how bright the Samsung TV is. It is rated at around 1500 nits of peak brightness, while the Sony X900H hits around 700 nits. So yes, it is twice as bright and the difference is definitely noticeable. Now what's good about this? That you can enjoy better HDR performance content, whether it's gaming or movies, HDR stands out and this also works great for bright rooms or if you have a window next to your TV. Now I'm not saying that Sony looks bad, but when you put them together side by side, it is a noticeable difference and the thing is, we tend to go for brighter panels. Why? Because it's just easier in our eyes. We can see things clearly, but this also depends on where you are. So if you're using this TV in a dark room, it might just be too bright and it could be uncomfortable for your eyes. So just think on your situation. Of course, you can always adjust the brightness to your preference, so I guess it's better to have it and not need it, and to need it and not have it, or something like that. Now I'm using the standard picture mode on both TVs with the picture settings that I think look the best in my opinion. I'm also using local dimming and high on both TVs so I can get the best black levels possible. Now something that I, I notice is that the Sony X900H handles better the local dimming. It has less blooming issues in dark scenes. You can clearly see it in a local dimming test. This can get distracting when you have subtitles on movies. You can see light bleed around the letters. I also did the star field test and honestly I thought they both did a great job but I can definitely see more blooming on the Samsung TV. Now th this could also be because the TV is just so bright that it can't handle all that light correctly. But then again, it has mini LED technology. It has over 500 dimming zones while the Sony has around 30 dimming zones. So I was expecting to see much better performance from Samsung. Now I'm no expert, but I think this can be fixed via firmware update, so hopefully we'll see that soon. Now I also compared Dolby Vision content versus HDR10 from Netflix. One of my favorite movies is Extraction. Now if you haven't seen it, go check it out. It is so much fun. I love that movie. But what I noticed is that Samsung has more of a saturated colors and red stands out more than anything. Now this intro scene from Extraction looks totally different on the Samsung TV. At the moment, I was using the intelligent mode or adaptive picture which does bring brightness to the picture but it also crushes black levels and shadow details. And even though some scenes do look a little bit better, overall it looks unrealistic and oversaturated. Now the best picture mode is movie, but I still had to adjust my settings in order to keep them more natural. Movie mode is of course the picture mode that I'm using. Let's go to experts real quick. Expert. Brightness is at 50. Contrast is at 50. Sharpness, I have this on 5. Even though you don't really need much of sharpness here in this, this is... 4K resolution, but I still feel like sharpness adds a little bit more clarity to the throughout the picture. So I'm using this on 5, this is totally optional. 
color no i re i reduce this to 20 value 20 because i don't like the oversaturation of uh that samsung brings in this uh on their tvs now tint i have it on g5 the reason is because i see a lot of red overall this tv so i uh switch this to g5 this is normally like this as you guys can see the red so i'm i'm very uh happy with g5 or g6 but i want to leave in g5 right now this is totally optional but i highly recommend if you have this model the q85 or the q90 right you can apply this to all sources just in case if you want to do that custom picture clarity i have this one uh in custom this is to enhance the uh, picture sharpness to optimize fast moving images i really like this uh sort of like a you can also have it in automatic or custom mine is custom 10 and 30 jutter uh jutter reduction and blur reduction and then over here local dimming i have this one in standard this makes a huge difference because local dimming on this tv it is very aggressive if you put it in high you notice how dim this tv gets as a matter of fact of course if you turn it low or low or well you, you can't switch it off if you turn it low it gets brighter but you also lose uh, some shadow details and you also get more blooming so standard feels that is the perfect fit then over here low uh, contrast enhancer i have this one in low if you turn it off the whole picture gets very very dim so you don't want to do that low i think is a sweet spot because high is just too bright so low is the one i'm using over here in color tone i use warm one that's the one that i like the most shadow details i do have shadow details on level two because this this uh tv also gets a little dark like i said the local dimming it's kind of aggressive on this tv so i'm using uh value number two on shadow details and then color space i have this one in automatic i feel like automatic does make everything more natural native everything is just so oversaturated and especially that red on this tv so automatic feels more natural and that, i think that's about it yeah so try those settings if you have this tv let me know in the comment section what do you guys think now overall these settings made the picture on samsung so much better everything look, looks more balanced red is drastically reduced and colors and skin tones look more natural now just remember these are my personal settings you can use them you can abuse them but always use the ones that works best for you now for gaming it's a different story i'm using game mode so everything runs smooth and with low input lag but samsung picture stands out more than sony now everything looks just so much brighter and colorful now in this video you may see more shadow details on the sony but remember that the camera is clipping brightness on the samsung tv since that panel is so much brighter but in person it looks totally different everything looks sharper and also colors and black levels look so much better on the samsung tv now both tvs have hdmi 2.1 support sony has two ports while samsung only one but then again one hdmi 2.1 port from sony is the one with earc so you have to choose between your sound system or your console now sony only has 4k 120 hertz feature available for gaming while samsung has freezing premium auto low game latency 1440p 120 hertz option available in all ports while 4k 120 hertz it's only available in one port so overall the experience for gaming samsung is the better choice so overall this new samsung qn85a it's a good tv uh they still need to fix that blooming issue but i'm pretty sure samsung will fix that samsung has a good track on up updating their tvs with a firmware update and fixing those little issues um and also if you have the sony x900h and maybe you're looking to upgrade your tv for a much brighter panel or maybe with a tv that has more gaming features this is definitely a really good choice i mean you will notice the difference like right away but uh, my suggestion right now is just to wait for a uh, price drop. You know, this the, the, the price right now is $1,600. Uh, 
and i'm pretty sure like maybe in three or four months down the road this tv is going to drop three or four hundred dollars so i highly suggest to wait for a price drop and maybe by then they're going to already fix those little issues that this tv has thank you for making it to the end of this video just just to be sure that you did let me know in the comments below which tv are you more excited for which new brand or new model from tvs are you looking for the new lg g1 that's the one that i'm looking for the new g1 looks very very i'm very excited for that tv but also what about the new uh, sony tvs the new OLEDs? they look pretty awesome too or maybe you want to get a new tco or a new hisense let me know in the comments below which one is the one that you're looking for the most in the meantime, thank you so much for stopping by. Check out the new merch. It should be already available in the store. Jolster merch! But that's not it. I also have the Pillow Companion. Yes. They work pretty good. Very effective. Very soft too. Oh, but that's not it. There's also the Jolster mask. You yeah. keep it safe in this COVID area right now. Very soft material. And you look like a ninja too. It's a little tight, but it's pretty awesome. Alright guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm Jolster and I'll see you guys on the next one. Jolster out!